Welcome to the host with the most podcast. Podcast. And now, direct from the Razzle Dazzle Studios, here's the tan, tattooed connoisseur of conversation, Todd Newton. Our website, ToddNewtonOnline.com, ToddNewtonOnline.com. Welcome to the podcast, Maria Todd, right over there behind the golden microphone. Uh, Maria, one of the things I tell my kids as often as the situation allows is minimize the number of regrets you have in your life. Don't live with regret. Wishing you'd done something differently will get you nowhere except if you make a mistake, if you take a wrong turn somewhere, accept that you did it, try to learn from it and move forward. I think regret is probably the biggest crutch a person could have. What do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't have a good opinion of this. Well, I, I if if I sit here and I think back on my life, you know, whether it's a, a career situation or a relationship situation, sure, there are some things that I could have done differently. But you know that old phrase: you, you make the best decision with the information the you have at the time. Yeah, I mean that's. That's really all you can do. But uh, I'm reading this this study from the University of Illinois in uh, Champaign that was backed up by Northwestern University, two pretty credible universities. I grew up in the Midwest there, and both of those are excellent schools. Uh, about right, what do they say? Well, it, it's about it's about regret. I, I think if you're focusing too much on regret, I think there's a, probably a subconscious aspect to it. You're focusing on. The past, maybe, so you don't have to really focus on what's happening right now, <clears throat> or, or um, maybe you don't have much. You're not seeing much hope career-wise or relationship-wise. Maybe you're bummed out. You've been single for a long time, and and instead of trying to figure out what needs fixing to get you where you want to be, you're thinking about you know screw ups from the past. And these researchers say that our biggest regrets do indeed involve relationships the most common regret that people have later in life 70s 80s involves romance and lost love now that confuses Aww. me that doesn't it, i mean th i think that the older generation is 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 much more romantic than people today would you agree with that in, in a certain way yes i would agree with that I think that they, you know, they look back on on past romances in a much more sentimental, uh, nostalgic, yeah, way. Uh, I would agree with that. I think people today, listen, you break up, you move on. I mean, that's kind of what happens, you know. But back then, you know, you found you you fell in love early in life, and and these are the people that stayed together for fifty or sixty years. So I can certainly understand it. But uh, those romances, those lost loves, the ones that got away, if you will, result in the biggest regrets towards the end of life. And I think that's I think that's kind of sad. I would, you know, parenting. It's really sad. Yeah. The, the, I mean, career regrets aren't even close. Finance regrets aren't even close. Now, see, that's good. You should never regret a financial move you make. It, listen, if you splurge and you say, you know what? I should put this in my retirement. I got five grand over here. I got a bonus check or something. I should put it in my retirement. Or I, you know, maybe I'll go to Paris for a week. What you know, don't regret moves like that. That only enhances your your life, you know. Uh some of the regrets were parenting, some of them were health related, but by an overwhelming percentage, uh, it was all about love and romance and the one that got away. Wow. And I don't think you Makes should you want to reach out. Yeah. But that's what Facebook's for, right? Going back so you and you can stalk that ex, <laughs> stalk that ex, <laughs> beg him for a do-over, right? That'll that'll solve that regret real want. fast, <laughs> quick. Let's get back to the talk that will keep you talking. This is the host with the most podcast with Todd Newton. What are you reading right now? Are you loving it? Are you telling everybody you know about it? Hopefully, it's my book, Life in the Bonus Round, which won Best Autobiography at the Beverly Hills Book Awards. Get your copy of Life in the Bonus Round now on Amazon or at ToddNewtonOnline.com. Speaking of romance, we were just saying this uh, study out of 
Chicago, Northwestern University to be specific, says that the biggest regrets people have later in life have to do with relationships and lost love and romance and all of that. The same study, Maria, says that you, you know you're a hugger. I am not a hugger. That's one of our one of our we we have so much in common. But one of our major differences is you love hugging people. I can't. I don't like hugging people. I figured it out. It's like I'm like sloppy, and you're we're Oscar and Felix. We're the odd couple. You're the neat one. I'm the sloppy one. I'm gonna hug you. And I don't care. You know, I'm not afraid of germs. You're the one that's really neat, can't stand feet, want, <laughs> want stuff, you know, ordered up. I, I get it, though. I, I wish I was like you, but I'm not. I just, I can't get together. That's why I got dogs all over my house. It's funny because I thought about you the other day. I, this, uh, a, a male, I won't say, you know, I won't go into detail about who this guy is just in case he's listening to us live or, or on the podcast, but uh, I, a male came in for a hug and I, I did the old handshake first so i was like ooh! so i had to pull back right. the handshake and then do the hug and it was the straightest oh, god. Hug. oh my god and mid <laughs> mid hug i was like oh i'm so happy maria isn't here to see this you know because i you'd be <laughs> i mean oh, i've been in the other side of the room cracking up yeah but aren't those are, are, aren't those half hugs the strangest things well see i'm used to what we call the church hug Oh. The church hug is where you don't really touch each other. You just kind of pat each other on the back. Yeah, yeah. Then you got the full on, which is like where you, you know, your chests are touching, you're, you're clasping each other around the back. I save those. Like, you get the full unadulterated hug from me if you're like somebody I really know, really like, really love, want to spend time with. Not casual passersby. Like, you'll get a hug from me, but it's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to pull you in and, and, and really squeeze you. If you if you go to hug somebody and it's a hug that's intended to make them feel better, like if they're sad or hurt or upset, this uh, this study that we were just talking about says that that hug, if, if the hug is intended to make someone feel better, the hug should last six seconds. And that seems like a long. I mean, think about it. One oh, you'd Mississippi, never do that. You two would never do that. Three Mississippi. <laughs> Four Mississippi, five Miss already. I, I've been out for three seconds already. By the way, five Mississippi, six Miss. That is a long. That's a date to me. That's a date. Yeah. You know. I used to work with a guy, and I now think his motives weren't the cleanest. But he would always give you the uncomfortable hug when he met you. Like when you saw him, he would hug you long enough for you to want to squirm. And then he lets you go. You have to squirm first. Then he lets you go. You, and sometimes I would try. I'm a hold out. I'm a hugger. I'm not gonna. I'd squirm. Uh -huh. no, get get off me. Oh. <laughs> it's just a, get off of me. Yeesh. Six seconds though. I that, don't know why that happens. Six seconds is a long hug. That's a long. I mean, that's intimate. You can't you can't hug for six seconds at church. And this weekend when no, you're in church, no. you find somebody. You go up. You hug that pastor for six seconds. And you tell you tell me how that changes the relationship. That's going to change. Oh the no, no, <laughs> no, Listen, no, I, no. But it's like don't we, make me feel creepy about hugs. But I don't want to give them either. It's like we talked about last week. You know, if you're looking to feel better or you need directions or information, I, I do not want to be the one that you come to. <laughs> I, if you need a hug. I, go to Maria. I am. Not, I'm going to turn my back and act like I'm on my phone. That's exactly. He'll shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for keeping the art of conversation alive. For more Todd, visit ToddNewtonOnline.com and don't forget to rate and review the show today. The host with the most Toddcast is produced by the host with the most LLC. All rights reserved.